Hoyu ye dafti. Aye, you. Well, is there anyone else silly enough to try keepy uppies with two footballs? All you need is one football. A football app that brings together the latest news and in match updates to football fans all over the world. One football covers over 100 international football leagues and competitions live and in comparable detail. Pick a team, any team. You'll receive live official updates from the team you follow around the clock. Make sure you download one football to ensure you get a great result. Out the first Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, podcast you take video by myself, Gogsy and Jamie. And today we're looking on uh, Steve Clark's first uh, 27 man squad uh, for Scotland. Yeah, it's strange, but it's more of a probationary squad, I think. Uh, at this moment in time uh, for the Cyprus and Belgium games. Ooh. Now, Jamie. Excuse me. It's been a long day, man. I know. But uh, what are you thinking ahead of these two pivotal fixtures? So, first of all, I'll start with um, strange that there's 27 men being named in this squad, but so be it. Mm -hmm. Steve Clark doesn't always necessarily conform to what people want. Uh, second of all, good. Good appointment. I'm glad that I riled up a lot of people with the Shelley Kerr comments because that was what <laughs> that was intended to do. Um, yep, keep going. Point number three as oh, yeah. Gogsy goes climbing to turn off the air conditioner. Uh, I don't actually have too many problems with the squad. I know we'll talk about surprise inclusions and yeah, possibly definitely. surprise omissions. Um, Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people weren't happy about David Turnbull not being included, but I'll get to my opinion when we come to the right. midfielders. We've got, we've got our opinions um, on that. Yeah, but what I will say is, as a provisional squad, I don't have too many problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, I also don't have too many problems with them, uh, with Steve Clark uh, going for what was that? Four Kelly players in the end. Yeah, uh, he obviously knows what they're going to do, so I don't have and too many if, problems with if, that. If he's comfortable playing Kilmarnock players and knows what to expect from them and they know what to expect from him as a manager... I think, I think it'll be like, do you remember when Gordon Strachan first brought in the like, six Celtic boys yeah. into the squad and it totally changed their campaign? I think the Kelly players might do a similar thing because they know what kind of work ethic Steve Clark expects, they know how he likes to play football, so when they're uh, sort of uh, out on the pitch they'll be leading by example and other players will be able to follow So I think training sessions will probably be a lot easier for Steve although Clark on with international, having examples. Although on an international level, all games are on grass, apart from San Marino. Of course, but I can't that's okay. That that's okay. I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. So we'll start, first place to really start is, is four goalkeepers four chosen. Goal I'm surprised because only two will be used. It probably goes to show that he doesn't quite know yet who's going to be his first choice. Mm -hmm. So we've got Scott Bain of Celtic, Liam Kelly from Livingston, David Marshall of Hull City and John McLaughlin of Sunderland. First and foremost, I think Liam Kelly's only been called up for the experience mm -hmm. to come in and provide an extra body during training, I think. That's why he's gone with the four keepers. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I think it will be between David Marshall and John McLaughlin for that backup spot, which I, I presume Scott Bain will probably keep. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna ultimately, if I was in the position, I would probably take Scott Bain and John McLaughlin because I think they possibly are the two best keepers out of the four. Yeah. But people obviously might disagree. Uh, what would be your two keepers of choice uh, from there? I think for me it'd be John McLaughlin and I would try David Marshall. Mm, dropping but, Scott Bain completely. I don't rate Scott Bain that highly, uh, as uh, I've told you. Fair enough. Uh, but then again, I've not seen David Marshall ever since probably. When was his last cap? <laughs> didn't he play in that game we got pumped by Norway 4 0? Honestly, I couldn't tell you when his last cap was. Because obviously he got punted out for Craig Gordon, which at the time was baffling. Mm. And then Gordon got punted out for McGregor, and then McGregor's retired, so. Very strange. 
sort of scenario for David Marshall to just all of a sudden pop back up. But I, I got I was completely surprised. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, if Sir Steve has got his own exactly. methodology, then fair enough. And if it works, then that's the most important thing. Good to go in. Very tired today. I know. Uh, man. It's just the end of college vibes, eh? I know. I know I've, I've no work really to be doing, so I'm just sort of sitting about bored, hence why I'm hence back we're, there again. Um, we're doing this video. We'll swiftly move over to the defenders where we've got Michael Devlin of Aberdeen, Stuart Finlay from Kilmarnock, Scott McKenna of Aberdeen, Charlie McGrew of Blackburn Rovers, Stephen O'Donnell from Kilmarnock, Liam Palmer of Sheffield Wednesday, <laughs> yeah. Andrew Robertson of Liverpool, John Souter of Heart of Midlothian, and Greg Taylor of Kilmarnock. So, it goes to show you that he, he's got a lot of faith within the Kelly defensive players, yeah. which I don't think will be necessarily a bad thing. No, I don't think it's bad either. Out of I mean, they've got the second best defensive record in the in the league last season. It will be interesting to see if Finlay or Taylor make it into the starting eleven. I don't think they will. I wouldn't be shocked if one of Suter or McKenna were dropped. Presumably, maybe McKenna, because John Suter, by the way, in that Scottish Cup final, he was the best player on the pitch. By the way, he was super. He was, he was fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And it's nice to see a young Scottish player actually progressing. He's at a team like Hart. He'll he's a player that in a few years will be down south playing yeah, good football. Definitely. Uh, and it's nice to see. So we've got. Do you know who who do you reckon he'll go with? Scott McKenna. I reckon and, we'll go a back four. Or I think he'll play O'Donnell right back, mm -hmm. centre halves of McKenna uh -huh. and Mulgrew. No suitor. Or I don't know. Probably suitor actually over Mulgrew definitely. I think Mulgrew's international career should be over. I understand why he's there though. Experience. He's an experienced yeah. head and a very mm -hmm. very young squad. To yeah, be fair. definitely. And left back Robertson. Yeah. Given that he's fit after the Champions League final. That's That's the big thing. I, I'd be inclined to agree with that. I, I could potentially see one of McKenna or uh, or Suter, unfortunately, maybe getting dropped for one of the Kilmarnock boys. But yeah. I, I do agree O'Donnell's our best choice for me at right back in the country. I know that Which, you might have um, different views. I, 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 I still prefer Richard Tate. I it's, beg to differ. It's not tinted specs. I still I, I just think... Richard Tate's better, well, he's not been tested at international level, O'Donnell has, and for me, O'Donnell's alright at club level, but international level, he's just I, I don't, the same. I don't necessarily, granted it's limited viewing time of Richard Tate, it's the few games that I've seen him at, it's the, the sports scenes and stuff like that, and it, it doesn't always tell the full story, it's the few live games a year that you are on TV that mm. I'll get to see. But for me, I just I think O'Donnell offers more. I think O'Donnell's a fullback that will get up and down the pitch, and I think Richard Tate would possibly need more support from what I presume will be James Forrest on that right hand side. And I don't feel like Forrest is the kind of player that will willingly track back and help. Agreed. And I think Richard Tate would maybe be exposed to on one too often, whereas I mm. think Stephen O'Donnell would maybe bomb on past them as well. Right. And, and play that sort of I know he's not necessarily the quickest full back or anything but it has been a partnership when used that has allowed James Forrest to just be free uh, when Stephen O'Donnell's been in the squad Forrest has been allowed to roam about and be free mm -hmm. and I think having that stability there is probably why Stephen O'Donnell would get picked personally if he was fit Kieran Tierney would play right back for me that's my personal opinion I know he's a left back or Callum Patterson would play there. He may as well just retire from international football altogether. Who? Tierney. Because <laughs> he's got Robertson ahead of him. That's alright. Tierney will get his move down to England soon and it'll be... It'll be who's Ars it'll who's be Arsenal better? Arsenal that's seen him. I bet you it's Arsenal that's seen him. Really? I think so. We were talking about this the other day. Anyway, that's by the by. So, our back four were in agreement. Michael Devlin was a bit of a shock for me, I must admit. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, I'd rather have Richard Tate over Michael Devlin. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't see anything special with Michael Devlin. Nor do I, but then at the same time I can sort of understand he's he's going with players that he's probably thought were difficult opposition when he's played them mm. this season, I would imagine. 
shock. We'll move over from the defence and into the midfield. Now this is where there's a few controversial picks for some yes. people. Some people were very, very unhappy at the exclusion of Lewis Ferguson and more so David Turnbull from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll give you a, a we'll give you the the midfielders that have been selected by Sir Steve himself. Those are Stuart Armstrong from Southampton, Tom Kearney of Fulham, John McGinn of Aston Villa, Callum McGregor of Celtic, Kenny McLean of Norwich City, Scott McTominay of Manchester United, and Graham Shinney of Aberdeen. Now, people were raging that Tom Kearney's been brought back into the fold. People are idiots. Correct. In my opinion. Tom Kearney, and no disrespect to David Turnbull, who has had a blinder of a season, yeah. Tom Kearney is a better football player overall, oh. as things stand right now, if you were to match them up one and one I'll tell you now, Tom Kearney has just played a season in the Premier League. Exactly. And captained a team, although they got relegated, he's the captain of a team that's been in the Premier League over exactly. the last Exactly, and he, he shone for them, he was a standout performer yeah. for them. I mean, when, out of the few players that yeah. did play well for them. So... For me, that's nonsensical. Why would you not have Tom Kearney back in the Completely squad? Agree. All that happened was he had a fallout with Alex McLeish, and he wasn't Who happy wouldn't? with it. I, I get why he didn't want to play for McLeish. I, I totally understand. I wouldn't want that. to play for McLeish. Then you've got the people that aren't happy at the inclusion of Graham Shinney. Now, uh, I don't think Graham Shinney is a bad player to have in your squad. No. I believe Graham Shinney has been brought into this squad because of his versatility. Yeah. He can play in a multitude of positions. He could play at full back if needs be. He can play in the centre of the midfield. He could do a job if you're trying to go defensive against Belgium and you want somebody playing out on the right hand side that's just going to double up on Hazard out on the left. He fills that role well. Yeah. I, I understand his inclusion. It's not just for playing Cyprus, it's a squad that's going into two games here that are crucial. And you need to be able to mix it up because what will work against Cyprus most definitely won't work against Belgium. So oh yeah, I completely agree. I can totally Belgium is, understand that. Belgium is like that. the best team in Europe. One of yeah. One of one of the best teams behind in maybe Europe. what France, maybe the Dutch yeah. just now. Yeah, and that's There's a few teams. Much, Belgium's in the top four. That they're, they're probably about somewhere alongside England for talent, although England yeah. always underperformed although despite the Belgium's last almost exiting that golden era. Yeah. Uh, that England are sort of kind of in. Yeah. Uh, I, I still don't think they necessarily but, uh, are. C but still. Cyprus are still 50-50, still really. You, you don't know what to expect from them. We, we expect to beat them. And we oh, should yeah. expect to we beat should them. We should expect to beat them at home. Uh, when, it, when it goes, I presume he'll play a sort of 4-2-3-1 formation. That's what I presume he'll I play. I'd rather play 4-4-2 against Cyprus. I think he might just go 4-2-3-1. I think that's probably how we'll play, because it's what most managers tend to play. Maybe a a four three two one that turns more into a four three three kind of formation. Yeah, I prefer that. Uh, so for me, the midfielders that will start will be uh, John McGinn. It will be Callum McGregor, and it will be Stuart Armstrong. I would imagine are the three that he goes for out of those. Yeah. Kenny McLean just missing out, but still being there. Scott McTominay, I think, will start against the Belgians. To shoot yeah. it up, I don't think Cal McGregor will start against the Belgians. I think it'll be Scott McTominay. Uh, the one that I'm most excited about of those group uh, is, without a shadow of a doubt, John McGinn. After what he did, he was exceptional in the playoff final he was on indeed. Monday. He so, was indeed. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him back in a Scotland shirt uh, where he's not necessarily had the best performances. No, he is. For all the players we've got playing in the Championship, it's a completely different ball game in an international stage. However, the one thing that is very promising is Stuart Armstrong, still quite young. Yeah. So is Tom Kearney, so is John McGinn, so is Callum McGregor, so is Kenny McLean, so is Scott McTom. Like, they're all young enough that they could be around for at least a couple of tournaments. Mm -hmm. So they'll grow together, which is exciting. Yeah, uh, definitely. And David Turnbull's going to get his chance. He will. It'll come. Definitely. I mean, I, I watched uh, Steve Clark's first uh, interview, press conference. Pr first press conference. Yeah. And he said that Ferguson and Turnbull are both very much in his thoughts, but the thing is, uh, he, d he didn't think they were ready, and that's absolutely fair I, enough. I, I personally think, had it have been something like Cyprus and San Marino, they would have got picked. Yeah. I think it's the 
the like I said, having those versatile players when it comes to playing Belgium that can get in behind the ball and play teams on the counter and beat teams with a bit of pay. That's where I think they two have probably been admitted. However, I would have had them along at training. Oh, if if they would have been willing to go, I would have I would have gave them the experience. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have put them in the squad, but I wouldn't have played them. Mm. Because I, I, I don't think they're ready yet. Then we've got the forwards. So there was another controversial couple of picks here for people. Yeah. So we've got Eamon Brophy of Kilmarnock. Oliver Burke of Celtic, who's obviously on loan from West Brom. We've got James Forrest also of Celtic. Ryan Fraser of Bournemouth. Mark McNulty of Hibs on loan from Reading. Lewis Morgan of Sunderland on loan from Celtic and Johnny Russell of Sporting Kansas City. Now people again weren't happy with the inclusion of Ollie Burke or Mark McNulty or Lewis Morgan. Now, we're not blessed for strikers right now, no, let's be not. honest. No, we, we've talked about this in a previous podcast. Yeah. So, so we know for a fact our wingers will be James Forrest and Ryan Fraser, yeah. providing both are fit. We know 100% that's where we'll go. But unfortunately, we are reduced to having to call up Mark Mark McNulty. Who, no disrespect, Tom's had a decent enough season in the Premier League. Yeah, he's he's not played badly. He's scored goals. But he's I, been good I, for Hibs. I still don't think he's of that standard, unfortunately. If Lee Griffiths had have been about, he would have been the one that oh, was yeah, there. If Stephen have. Naismith I'd... had have been fit, he would have been in mm. there instead of either Ollie Burke or Lewis Morgan. Let's make no qualms about. We've got injuries. We've got other issues around strikers and we're not currently very blessed with strikers mm -hmm. Jordan Rhodes is behind Timo Pukki at Norwich despite Norwich wanting to sign him permanently jo Jordan Rhodes has just been one of those players that he's, he's sort of like been the one that got away yeah um, and then, you, then you're looking at the one player that you're thinking if we could attract him to play for Scotland it changes everything is Che Adams, Adams. He's, he's the one that I hope Steve Clark keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and gets him to Come, because I think he would eventually. Yeah. Uh, but I think it will take a lot of persuasion for him to maybe come. Now the controversial picks were Ollie Burke, Mark McNulty, and Lewis Morgan. Any of them that you wouldn't have had in the squad that you would have replaced with somebody else? To be honest, I don't really pay much attention to most players that are out with Scotland. So. So, I'd have overlooked probably Lewis Morgan. Now, Lewis Morgan, in the games that I've watched him play, has been superb. Uh, he, him, and, him and Chris Maguire have been brilliant for, for them all season long for Sunderland uh, when playing. Lewis Morgan played quite well in the uh, uh, League One playoff final that they unfortunately lost in the last minute for us because we're not going to be watching Championship football uh, no, next season. Brutal. Um, so, Lewis Morgan being included, I'm, I'm more than happy with. That doesn't really bother me. Mark McNulty, again, you just need another backup striker because yeah. if not, you're playing somebody out of position. I can see why he's there. He's probably second best as to what we've got. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine that will be either Brophy or Russell that will start. And I'm fine with that. Mm. Do you think, though, with it being 27 players, he'll have to whittle it down to 23? Well, maybe. Maybe. He might whittle it down to 23, but then he might go with a 25-man squad. And then just not have two players within the match day oh, squad yeah. who might feature in the following match day squad, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it might just depend. There might be injuries, there might be whatever. I do think that some of the players that will miss out will be like two of the keepers for sure, which takes you to 25. Then you only need mm -hmm. to drop two more players. Wouldn't it shock me if somebody like Mikey Devlin was gone? And then maybe even. Maybe a Mark McNulty or something maybe does yeah. get dropped, but I'd be, I wouldn't be too shocked if he was still about the squad. Ollie Burke was the one that people were raging about for the forwards again for David Turnbull. Mm -hmm. I can see where they're coming from. David Turnbull's had a good season, but I think Oliver Burke is still a talent. Yeah, and he proved when he first came in under Brendan Rodgers, he was brilliant for them. He was. And then and Lennon then comes in. And change the system. Change the system. He's not a Lennon player. There was still a lot of players there that Lennon maybe had a hand in bringing in or knew from previous times or players that he had tried to sign to Hibs or wherever it might be that he had went. So Oliver Burke maybe maybe he will flourish under under Steve Clark. 
I don't think he'll be a starter. Um, no. I think well, we've obviously both agreed that it'll be Fraser and Forrest on the wings. Who yeah. who do you go with through the middle? I want to try Brophy. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would like him and Brophy because I think with the with the right service, Brophy you could completely buy. Yeah, I think he would be good. The only other player that you could potentially for me play there is Johnny Russell, and I wouldn't be disappointed if he did play there. I think he's too similar a player to your sort of. Winger though. I tell you what, I don't know if like you've seen his. Winger. Did you see his goal that he scored the other day? No. It's an absolute corker. Watch it. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Aye. Uh, yeah. So Brophy getting his chance. Do you think? Yeah, I, I think Brophy should get his chance because uh, yeah, he, he was injured for a bit during the season, and he still got what 13, 14 goals. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, I for a for a team like Kamarik to have had the season they've had, uh, they definitely deserve a few players in the squad. How many players do you think would have already made it had Alex McLeish have been there? Do you think any of the Kelly players make it apart from O'Donnell? No, I don't. No. I think. I, I don't think so. Tom Kearney obviously doesn't make it. I don't think Mikey Devlin makes it. I don't think. Graham we- Shinney. I don't think, yeah, I don't think Graham Shinney would be there Lewis Morgan would be there There's seven players And then mm. as for keepers I don't think he would have called up McLaughlin And I don't think he would have called up Kelly Or probably. Marshall Or who would he have went with Being in Archer Probably <laughs> <laughs> um, Right okay. people, were, people, have been slagging, people have been slagging this squad off Saying had McLeish have picked it, it would be going mental. And I don't necessarily think that's true. I get why people were annoyed mm-hmm. at the exclusion of David Turnbull. And I, I, I just say, look, Clark is basically starting a new leaf here. It's a completely new page yeah. in the Scotland national team history uh, with Steve Clark. I think he's going to do well. And then the other thing that you've got to remember is Steve Clark has had how many days? Five days to pick a squad? Pretty much. Something like that. Although I'm pretty sure he's been doing it for the whole season behind closed doors. I think he knew he was going to get the job. Well, he certainly knew when he said bye Rangers, bye Celtic and that. Yeah, he knew. Yeah, he definitely knew. Obviously he knew because he said I won't won't be here next season. So he knew where he He was going. He basically said that I... it's been a quick turnaround for us and I don't necessarily expect this squad to be the squad that ends up going forward, i.e. I think had he not have had prior commitments, I don't think that Graham Shinney would be in the squad and I think it would have been John Fleck that would have took his yeah. place. I think had it have been a different two set of fixtures, you would have seen Turnbull and Ferguson in the squad. So mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to be optimistic. If we could get a, a really good striker like a, like a Shea Adams, mm-hmm. I think we'd be laughing because we're a good group. Of, we've got a good group there. We just and they're young. They're good yeah. developed together, and I think the future is bright for Scottish football again. Mm-hmm. I think it may just take a couple of tournaments. Yeah, I think I think I do think we will be there. I think we will qualify out of this group. Really? Yeah. I, I'm not necessarily saying it will be that we finish second in the group and go that way. It might be because of the Nations League. Oh, yeah. But I do think we will be a team that will be playing in the Euros in 2020. Can I make a bold prediction? Go for it. I think we'll get we'll get qualified by beating Finland. David Turnbull will score the winner. Can I make an even bolder prediction? What? I predict Scotland, right here, right now, oh, will get out of the group at the 2020 Euros. That's my bold you prediction. Had it here first. That's my bold Shall prediction. Shall we end it on that? I but think so. On that bombshell, on as that Jeremy bombshell. Clarkson would say. Yeah, on that bombshell. Uh, Scotland are apparently going to get out of uh, the, the tw- groups, the group stages of the we, 2020 we, we, Euros. Where do you think we'll be playing our fixtures? <laughs> Could be anywhere. <laughs> Could be Ukraine, could be Portugal. <laughs> Somehow they'll they'll manage to get it in Qatar and Baku and Azerbaijan and that. They'll figure out a way of fixing it so that it's there so they can get all the oil money, I'm sure. Oh, definitely. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, wee podcast we've done. Uh, I've been Gogsy. 
I've been Jamie. Oh, and by the way, if in the comments you aren't happy about anything that I said this time, just remember Shelley Kerr was definitely the right choice for the Scotland job, <laughs> and she always will be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later, guys. Take care.